Wade, stupid for movies. Here's the thing, I, I, I don't like the title, and I'll tell you why. I don't like any title that has its criticism already built into it. Like, do you remember the Matthew McConaughey film, Failure to Launch? Why call a movie Failure to Launch when you just know it's gonna get its ass kicked? What are we talking about? I'm just saying, You're I don't like saying? the name of the show. Oh, our show. Our show. Well, I don't like the name Inglorious Bastards. It's misspelled. Yes, but that, see, but Quentin is so cool. He's not that cool. He's not that cool. He thinks he's that cool. Okay. Now, we went to the Junket. We did go to the Junket. Uh, uh, before the movie opened. Yes. Now, here's the thing with Junkets. Now, Bloody people may dreadful. not know how Junkets work. They're junkets, horrible. They're, they're horrible. They're insufferable. You, uh, you're packed in like, like cattle with a bunch of other press people. And uh, especially at the television junket, you sit and you wait like you're in line for an attraction at Disneyland. And eventually they call you into a room and like an attraction at Disneyland, you spend about five minutes, if you're lucky, talking to the talent and then you move on and it's waiting until you get to the next one. You can literally spend all day just to get about 15 minutes worth of material. Absolutely horrible. Well, here's what's good about the junket. Yes. You get there, you check in with the publicist. Who's always, all publicists in Hollywood are cute. They're all 28 years old, they're brunettes, and they're all cute. That's like part of the farm system. That's like part of the mill. The That's your experience? Mill. Yes. All right. I know that they're all okay. cute and they're brunettes. So you have names? Saying. You have names of the publicists? I do not. No, no, Gelman, I don't. Well, let's move on to no, actually not. the press junket. Okay. How about Here's that? the right. thing. You get there, <laughs> you check in, uh, you wait your turn, because yes. you are there with not only like all the big, uh, all the big TV you know, interviewers, but you're also there with like, like the, the idiot from WKNT uh, from Miami. In Saskatchewan. In Saskatchewan. Yeah. So what you do is you eat as much food as you can, and then you sit the in the hallway. The food is a bonus. I will concede that. The food is a bonus. But you have to get there early because otherwise all the rest of the pigs from the press corps eat up all the good food. The reason why the food is a bonus is because most junkets take place at the Four Seasons Hotel in Los Angeles. Yeah, most do. So if you're at the Four Seasons Hotel and they're giving you food, that means it's going to be, oh, let's just say, good food. Yeah. And so I ate all the cookies. And you didn't get to eat that weird the, the, trade of, of plate the, the of like eggplant, eggplant uh, thing. fondue thing. Yeah, that was that was unfortunate. That was all. Well, let's perfect. take. How about we take a look at your? Well, I say we start off with your Eli Roth interview. That's one of my favorites. Okay. Uh -huh. Now here's the thing. We hate Eli Roth. Do we? We don't like his movies. We don't like his movies. I don't mind. Personally, him. he seems pretty cool. I, let me label it this way. It's not that I have a bias against his movies. I just don't like gore films in general. So you know, he could make the greatest. Gore, he could make the Citizen Kane of gore. And I still wouldn't like it because not my kind of filmmaking. He, however, seems like a nice enough guy. Uh, so wait, here's the problem. The problem mm -hmm. is you don't like Jews. That's there the you go. It's it's true. My my anti-Semitism does bleed through. Okay, so uh, yes. we uh, we we went to the junket at the Four Seasons. We yeah. talked to four or five uh, people from the film actors we from did. the film. The first one was Eli Roth. Eli Roth. So we 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 busted our cherry on Eli Roth, and we'd like to take a look at that right now. All right. So Eli, I was a little worried in the film. Boston accent, baseball bat. Are you a Red Sox fan? Well, considering yeah, I that I grew up in Boston, I was actually born with a baseball bat in my hand. And I grew up in the 70s going to Fenway Pack yelling, Yankees suck! Yankees suck! <laughs> so, uh, yes, I'm a huge Red Sox fan. Mets fan, good or bad, be honest. <sighs> you know, I gotta say, as long as you don't mention 86, it's fine. But the truth is, we get mad about the Mets in 86, but the painful thing is we're more mad at Bob Stanley and Calvin Schiraldi. You know, I, I, I can't hate the Mets the way I hate the Yankees. I just can't. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's painful. I still can't really talk about 86. Okay, he, he, I, he, I have no idea what any of that means. He, he, there's a word for that. <laughs> Baseball people. That's called, that's called wasting the four minutes you have <laughs> with your celebrity to talk about shit that nobody cares about yeah. has nothing to do with the movie. But I sort of wanted to get in with his good graces. And, and you did. And are you are you are you gonna have dinner with him sometime? Uh, is that what this we're, is all about? We're, we're, we're dating. You're saying you asked that question to get in his good graces, and yes. it seemed like you might be actually interested in that question as a Mets fan. Yes. I want to roll beaver all of that and see how interested you. Being that I grew up in Boston, I was actually born with a baseball bat in my hand, and I grew up in the '70s going to Fenway Pack yelling Yankees suck. Do you guys? Do you, you especially guys, especially Mark? Do you care at all? When you're interviewing these people, because no. we're trying to we're trying to show that we're an important show, we're new, we care, we're interested, we have to say, and you guys are just doing this the whole time. You, you, every every single interview, you're like this. You have to understand that because immediately preceding that interview, uh, we were slouched up against a wall in a hallway, throwing our our lumbar support out for about 45 minutes. So that was Mark's opportunity to finally get into a comfortable chair, and he was taking up advantage of every second of it. Uh, let's, uh, well. let's talk about well, the movie for a few minutes. Well, here's the thing. I we have been waiting for this film for years, like all of it. All, oh no, all no, no. you've been waiting fans. for it yes. for years. Yes, 
I uh, went in there thinking it was going to be one thing, and it turned out to be something completely different. Uh, when Tarantino announced he was doing the film, everybody thought it would be a dirty dozen film where a bunch of uh, uh, World War II guys go kick Nazi ass and they go with their machine guns and they well, that's all what die the original, That's what the original was. The original 1978, which is essentially kind of a quasi black exploitation era knockoff of the Dirty Dozen. Okay. By, by an Italian spaghetti western director, which is tailor made for Quentin. It's all this genre fusion stuff. But okay. The, the original, by the way? S sucks. Hor it's great. No, it's no, awesome. It's terrible. It's wonderful. No, it's not. It's blissful. You gotta be kidding. It's a it's a fantastic soul searching experience. Uh, you're, 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 you're you're making that up. Thank okay. You. So we think the film's going to be, and all of us fans think the film's going to be a dirty dozen. Turns out it's not. It really not is, even it remotely. really is the story of the blonde who we had talked to. No, it's it isn't her story. though. It, it part of it is her story, and part of it is the story of of the of the inglorious bastards, and part of it is the story of. Uh, of some British guys who are going undercover, and none of this stuff gels. It all, it all, it, there are all these disjointed story threads that just lie there for 15 and 20 minutes at a time and never actually coalesce. Wade, you ignorant slut. No. Let me tell you something. Yeah, go ahead. What I, what I liked, I have no doubt that this, that the film that was released was not the film he wrote. No, it was not sure the film won't. he originally directed. No. It was not the first cut that came out of the Abbott. No. I guarantee you that. I agree. But I went with it. And what he basically gives you are five interlocking short stories. That's really what it is. Yes, and it's incoherent and it's boring and it's two and a half hours long. You you are a guy who always no. says you are a guy who always complains about the three act structure and how I wish somebody would break the mold and do this. Here's a guy who does something totally different and you're not on board. Because he did it wrong. And Let we'll me tell you right. something. Let me tell you something. This film could be fixed. It could be fixed if he had had someone Wait, else. They're laughing at you outside. Did you hear that? They're yeah, laughing at you. That's brilliant. This film could be fixed if he had had somebody looking over his shoulder, whether in the writing process, whether in the shooting process, whether in the editing, who could have pulled him aside, grabbed him by the ears, and just said occasionally, you're getting a little out of control, that's wrong, we need to pull you back in. Every director needs a, a good, strong producer. Lawrence Bender is not that producer. Lawrence Bender is the guy who laughs and pats him on the back and says, buddy, you are all right, you rock, whatever you want. And everyone lets Quentin do what he wants because he's an auteur and no one reigns him in anymore. And because he was, had so much success so early in his career, his growth as an artist wound up being stunted by not having all of that, that, those adversarial things to deal with. There was no adversity in his career. And as a result, he's surrounded by yes people and everything he does is flabby now. First of all, Wade, you're off the show. Thank Second you. Second of all, here's the thing, is that I like guys like Tarantino and although I, I have a lot of problem with Robert Rodriguez, I like him too because you feel like these guys are outside the system. They're doing whatever they want to do. You don't feel as if they're tethered to a studio. You know who else is outside the system? Uh, Godard. Porn people. <laughs> a whole porn industry is outside the system. But, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it, just because he's outside the system, he still has to exercise some discipline as an artist. And the film is undisciplined. It's completely undisciplined. Why don't you just go with it? If you go with it, it's great. It's I a lot of fun. There's great Parts there's great are fun. Parts are fun, but it doesn't hang together. There's great performances. The there Christoph are. Christoph Waltz, the but guy who plays the main Nazi. it doesn't hang together. That guy is great. Yeah, doesn't hang together. I don't know what I I, I don't know what he was actually. Why is Mike Myers in this movie? I have the foggiest fucking idea. That's the problem. 